So you love photography. So do I. Have you had anybody tell you, hey, don't get into that field because it's not profitable. You're not going to make any money. There's a dime a dozen out there of photographers, blah, 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 blah. I was told that early on and um, by a, a, a distant relative said, why would you want to do photography? You have a welding job. You, you, you make decent money. Why would you want to do that? You have a guaranteed income. And I said, well, I don't like it. I do it, but I don't like it. Fortunately, I say fortunately, I hurt my back at work and I was off for like a year. And when it came time to go back, I decided I don't want to go back. And even if I wanted to go back, they had already hired somebody else. It was a non-union shop and blah, blah, blah. And um, I was 24 years old. So now I'm 60. And I made that decision at that point. My, uh, I had some good people behind me, my brothers and my parents. I said, just do what you want to do. What's the worst that can happen? If you do this, what's the worst that can happen? You can start over do something else. That, you know what? That's all I needed. And thank God I, have, I had a knowledge. I had this, uh, and I still do. I can't learn enough. I want to learn more and more and more. I want to learn more about photography, lighting. Lighting is key. If you know lighting, you will do really great. You'll be a really good, good photographer. Um, composition and lighting, but lighting, I would say, is above all the most important thing. Take your camera with you. I, when I go anywhere, I have my camera with me. I shoot all the time. Um, now, I bought a compact camera. I have a, a little Leica Q3, and it's a fixed lens, 28 millimeter. It's really cool, though. It can crop in at 60 megapixel. It's phenomenal, and I do a lot with that. I also have the bigger cameras. Um, but my point is, take a camera with you. It could be a $200 camera. It could be a pocket camera. It could be even your phone, if that's all you have. But look at light. Look at how it's coming in. Look how it bathes people. Look how the absence of light, the contrast. Look at stuff like that all the time. I mean, I always, and I stress, always have a camera with me. Um, it might not be on me personally. It could be in my car, but usually I have it with me, especially if you carry a small one and you're golden. Um, but had I listened to the relative that said, don't, don't do it because you're not going to be good with it. I would still be welding. And welding was okay, but it's not something I could see myself doing for 30 years. Absolutely not. So I'm thankful that I listened to my intuition and my passion for photography. I photographed some really, really high-end events. I photographed funerals. And a funeral for somebody that uh, was a very well-known singer and it was his mother-in-law, and it was a two-day event. I got some phenomenal pictures from that uh, funeral. And I'll tell you a little story. Um, I photographed a couple's wedding. Uh, it's probably been 15 years ago. Really nice couple. He was uh, a military guy, and he was doing military for life, and she was in the military. And he had seven tours of duty. Just rock solid dude. Um, about four years ago, five years ago, she called me and she says, Joe, she goes, uh, my husband passed away. His aorta exploded, separated on him. And she said, it's really hard on us to have two little kids. And she goes, you know what? You started our life together taking pictures. I would like you to be the one to end it. And I bought, I, I literally about died. I says, I mean, that was hard for me. It was, um, it was at West Point in New York. We went to New York and captured that event. And I, I mean, I was crying taking the pictures. I, I felt a connection with them because they, they've always been in and out, in and out. He traveled all the time. He was, like I said, he had seven tours of duty. They loved Alaska. They were going to stay in Alaska when they retired. And it was, it was, it was such a touching, touching day. It was hard. Believe me. But she is so grateful for that. I am grateful for that. I got something that um, most people looked at me like, what are you doing? Why are you shooting a funeral? Well, they wanted me to. And once I got past, you, you got to look at it um, like a life photographer, National Geographic photographer. We are on an assignment. 
and, and it's hard, but especially when you know the people and you've dealt with them and you've done their wedding, it makes it even harder, but yet it's more valuable. Um, and I'm, like I say, I'm very, very thankful. Had I been in the weld shop, I would have never even done that. I didn't go to college. Um, didn't, I, I really wasn't that great at school, and that's my own fault. I'm not blaming anybody. I just never applied myself. Um, I got into weld shop at the vocational in high school, and I thought, well, you know what? This isn't bad. I'll just do that. But it really just wasn't me. I had a job at an elevator company. It had its ups and downs. Um, uh, but it was it was okay. It didn't pay that great. It wasn't bad. Um, but like I said, I was 24 years old. I had, uh, ruptured my fourth and fifth lumbar, and after a year off, I didn't go back. I got into photography full time, and I've been doing full time since. And I'm 60 years old. I've made a really decent living doing this. I've met some really, really fantastic people, which I'm grateful for. Um, it's opened doors for me in so many different areas. Um, I do most of the canine photography for the police departments in Ohio, um, SWAT team. I do a lot of cool stuff, but you have to apply yourself. You have to get in there and do some things, let them know who you are, and follow the passion that you have. I do all kinds of photography. I shoot real estate, um, corporate work, headshots. I have a physical studio, which I'm in now. I don't like these lights. Um, I ordered a couple uh, continuous light source, um, and I just want, they're from Black Magic. I don't want the loud fans and all that stuff, and I'll be able to put my soft boxes on it. This is not how I would light something, obviously, and I hate fluorescent lighting. I absolutely hate that. Um, so bear with me. But I wanted to get this video out to you and let you know that it, it, it's important to follow what you want to do. Don't listen to people, because no, mat no matter what, you'll find somebody that agrees with you, and you're going to find a lot of people that don't agree with you. Um, it has to come from, like, in here. If it's inside the heart, you got it made, man. You got it made. It, you know, if, if what's the worst that can happen to you? You got to take a break from it and do something else for a while. Uh, like I said, I was fortunate enough to do it, and I didn't have a lot of expenses. Um, I incurred a lot of expenses in photography, um, but that was my choice, and some of that was very stupid, very stupid. I'm not a businessman first, which I should have been. I am now, but can't go back, can't change things, but you can always move forward from this time on. So that's what I have done. And I help people along the way. I'm mentoring uh, uh, a friend of mine who I met on Facebook who's a policeman. Um, his name is Scott. Hey, Scott, if you're watching, Scott's doing really well. I'm very, very proud of that guy. I mean, he takes it and he just goes with it. He'll call me off and on. What should I do? How should I set this? What can I do? He's come down to the studio a couple times. I've taken some headshots for him. I went on a couple jobs with him to help him. And he's very grateful. And he also pays me. And I don't want money from him, but he said, hey, your time is worth it to me. I want to pay you, and you'll just uh, send me Venmo or Cash App or whatever, PayPal. And I mean, I'm very thankful, but that's not why I was doing this. I want to help them. Because the more people that know how to shoot good, there's so many photographers out there that don't know how to shoot at all. And honestly, it's, it's a shame because a lot of people don't even know what is good and what's bad. And I guess that's just the way things have, the path everything has kind of like went on. Um, iPhones are great, Android phones are great, cameras are great in them, but they're not like shooting with a uh, mirrorless or a DSLR camera. They're just, they're not going to be. They might be in 10 years from now, but they're, they're nowhere near what we can get with a 60 megapixel full frame camera. No, no, no comparison at all. So I guess my thought process here is if you love what you're doing, do it. Take your camera with you everywhere you go. Get a small camera, take it with you. Get a little Canon, a small, get something. Nikon makes a really small camera. Um, I don't know the models of them because I'm not following that route. I have a Leica Q3 and I love it. It's expensive. <clears throat> it's really not, is it practical in a sense of money wise? No, but not everything is practical that's worth it. And that to me is worth it. The camera is phenomenal, 60 megapixel, small, you could take it to anywhere. and People don't even think you have a professional camera. They look at that and say, oh, you got a little point and shoot. Get into museums with that. People don't have a clue. So 
but it gives way, way better results than you're ever going to get with any kind of phone or small camera. It's just, it's just phenomenal. But that's my preference. That's something for me. Um, I've shot jobs with it. I've shot food with it. I mean, I've done really well with that camera. Um, would I buy it again? Yeah, I would. And that's the thing. The more you shoot, the better you get. The more you look, the better you, you can see how light affects the scene. Take a cloudy day and take a sunny day, same scene, and you're going to see a huge difference, but you've got to learn to shoot in every situation. And that's what makes a photographer a photographer. Not what kind of gear you have, um, not who you know, not what class you went to. It's your daily experience of shooting that makes you better and better. And honestly, I have some really cool mentors out there that I follow, um, but in real reality, I want to be better than myself. I want to be better than I was last week. I want to be better than I was yesterday. So in order to do that, you have to what? You have to shoot, and you have to shoot all the time. It's like anything, like a surgeon, like you know, uh, anybody. Anybody that, uh, a, a builder, somebody that builds a house, homes, somebody that lays flooring down. You get the guy that can lay flooring down that does a phenomenal job, then you get somebody that's an amateur and they really struggle with it. But in order to get to the point where that guy is that's phenomenal, A, you have to have the passion for it, and B, you have to do it all the time. Same thing with this. So keep shooting, keep a positive attitude. Don't let the negative people weigh you down. Just look at them and smile and just keep moving. Set a goal for yourself. In photography, say, hey, I want to have X amount of jobs this year. I want to be able to photograph kids. I want to photograph people. I want to go to corporations and shoot. Set a goal and just stick to that goal. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. That's my advice. What, do you, what are your thoughts? What do you think? Have you been to that route? Have you been there and somebody says, hey, you're crazy doing this? Have you listened to them? The way you know... The way you are going to be able to tell is if you put the camera down and you can't, you find yourself can't be without it. You got to shoot. You got to do something fun, something that you want. And you gravitate toward that camera all the time. You know that's something you want to do. And I'm not talking just in photography. I'm talking about in any passion that you might have. Stick with it. Just do it. Be you. And you know what? Nobody else can be you. Nobody can be me. I can't be the mentors that I'm. I like uh, me. I have my own style. I have my own lighting patterns. I have everything. And I learn from them, but I get my own style. I have my own style. I try to get better and better and better. And that's something I believe that you will do as well. So don't listen to them. Take that camera out. Take whatever it is you're doing. Do it. And, and just enjoy the process of learning and help people along the way. We're here to help people. We can't take anything with us. You can't do anything. You have to have money. Yes, money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Take that money. If you make good money, take it and help somebody. Help a struggling person that's trying to get into photography. A lot of people can't afford simple stuff. I mean, literally, they can't afford simple things. Um, so bless somebody with old camera gear, try to sell it all the time. Well, you know what? You're not going to get much for it. You're going to pay eBay and all those fees that they give it to somebody. If it's five, six, seven years old, what are you going to do with it? I mean, the cameras made today really are not collectibles. They're not like the 40s and the 50s, and at least in my opinion. I mean, you, you, they come out with stuff every year, and it's better and better and better, and they add more bells and whistles, and sometimes I think that's way too much. It just confuses your mind. So don't overbuy. Just buy something you can afford and build your way up to getting something you really, really want. You won't regret it. I guarantee you, you will not regret it. Bottom line. Hey, that's all I got for today, but thank you for listening. And uh, hit the like button. Subscribe if you'd like. I'm going to be doing videos like this off and on and some photography videos, some tutorials, all kinds of little things. Once I get my video stuff rolling, hey, I'm going to be there. So have a good day. Take the camera with you. Keep shooting. Talk to you later. Bye.